Well, that uh, that sucked. Really sucked. So the Dallas Mavericks continue their skid to start the NBA restart. Some news, if you missed it earlier, with the Spurs beating the Grizzlies, the Mavericks officially clinched not only a playoff spot, but the seven seed at bare minimum. And uh, with them starting 0 of 2 now to start the restart, there's not really a scenario where they move up. They would have had to have gone something like 5-2 and two through the final seven and had the Rockets and Thunder, who are both two and a half games up on them, have both of them basically post-losing records for them to have any chance of moving up. So it was pretty much already a certainty. But Dallas, despite making the playoffs for the 16th time in 20 years and first time since the 2015-2016 season, basically went out there and pissed the bed. Not really another way to sugarcoat that. The Mavericks posted 75 points in the first half again. Hey, great. Offense was there again. They were firing. And then, just like we talked about in the first game of the restart, the the closeout and particularly crunch time collapse, another season-long trend showed its head again, that being the third quarter collapse. Booker and Aiton got in serious foul trouble, like five fouls on Booker early in the third quarter. And Phoenix responded with a 26-9 run with their best player out of the game. Like, the defense completely collapsed in on itself. Dallas was up 11, and then it was like, in the blink of an eye, Phoenix was pulling ahead. And while Dallas actually performed better in the crunch time this game, for the most part, this the defense and leadership i feel like is really really lacking and here's here's the thing defense was during the the short training camp 2.0 that they ran for the restart the two things carlisle really beat into these guys heads was effort and defense the defense has been terrible you gave up another 117 in this game and while luca dropped a 40 piece his fifth 40 point game this year with 40 points eight boards, 11 assists on 11 of 20 shooting. Another thing I like, he only attempted three three three-pointers in this game after going one of nine last game. But that also means Luka is one of 15 on threes in the restart. That, or sorry, excuse me, one of 12. Apparently I'm a little blinded with frustration and I can't do basic math in my head on the fly. Uh, Porzingis on his 25th birthday drops 30 points in 37 minutes as well. 30 points, 8 boards, an assist, and 4 blocks, including a massively important block on Ricky Rubio that gave the Mavericks the ball down 2 with a chance to win uh, or tie. And then you have a scenario where you have an overturned replay on a out-of-bounds. And it's overturned, gives the Mavs one more shot for a Tim Hardaway 3. Man, Tim Hardaway's that dude on a lot of nights as far as... You know, my, my Mavs fast break co-host, Andy, likes to say he's he's just ignorant enough to to pull the trigger on some just crazy threes, just fearless. Man, this was not the game for that. I put him on this list there on the, the whiteboard next to me to spotlight. While Seth Curry did bounce back with a respectable performance in this game, 16 points, Tim Hardaway Jr. took a page at a Curry's game one of the restart going 1 of 12 overall from the field, and 0 of 8 on threes. The Mavericks got nothing out of anyone not named Luka or KP. Luka, 11 of 20, 8 of 18 of 19 at the line. Like, Luka got to the cup at will, finished consistently, and then converted at the free throw line. Like, that's exactly what you want him to do. KP, 10 of 20. Two of five on three, so it's not too many three point attempts for him either. Eight of eleven at the line. That's you know that's respectable. The problem is everybody else. Curry six of eleven from the field, three of six from three. Dorian Finney Smith five and ten, two of eight from the field, one of two on threes. I already mentioned Hardaway's one of twelve, zero oh of eight. Delon Wright one of five from the field. Kleba 
won a four from the field. Trey Burke cooled down, became his usual self again. Four points in 12 minutes, two of six from the field. Uh, Boban, six minutes, eight points, three boards, one assist. I know Boban's not a heavy minutes guy by any means, but you got to do something, man. You got to do something a little bit different. And I know he's a defensive liability because of his inability to move well on defense, but you got to give him more minutes in some way. You got to do something drastic, at the very least, help you in some of these rebounding areas here. Uh, Antonius Cleveland, this is interesting to me. Antonius Cleveland is now getting minutes over Justin Jackson. Rick Carlisle seems to be kind of signaling that Cleveland is going to get those heavier minutes over Jackson right now, which is a major demotion for Justin Jackson and a shocking elevation for Antonius Cleveland, especially considering he didn't really play with the team at all in this season. He was with the Legends. So to be in this scenario now is kind of incredible. He gives you three minutes, two points, nothing nothing to write home about. But yeah, this game, this is a frustrating game, man. The third quarter is the story. The third quarter in the defense, just terrible. Devin Booker, 30 points. He goes 10 of 20 from the field, only one of four from three. Ricky Rubio is basically, I think it was uh, Tyler Adams, uh, Adam on Twitter calling it out. He's basically f- former Maverick killer Andre Miller at this point. Near triple-double out of Rubio, 29-7. and seven. Um, Again, if KP doesn't get a fingertip on that incredible block in the final minute, I think he puts the dagger in it because he was controlling the final minutes of the game for Phoenix, it felt like. Uh, Johnson, 19 points, 12 boards, doing work. DeAndre Ayton, perhaps in part because of his foul trouble and just in part because of his rough shooting night, only three of eight from the field. Uh, Not a whole lot of impact in 21 minutes. Seven points, eight boards. Certainly not the kind of eye-popping numbers you would expect from a guy drafted where he was. But Phoenix got the scoring, man. They got freaking 10 points out of Cam Cameron Payne. That's crazy, man. He was on the Legends. We had him on the Legends. He went off for a little bit. There were people talking about, hey, maybe there's room for him on the Mavs roster, even though, even though he had been in Oklahoma City and then he'd shopped around when he was traded elsewhere. I forget where he went after OKC, but he was, you know, 26, 27 years old in the D-League, so people were kind of like, eh, not really interested in that. But, you know, look at that. He comes in, only 4 of 10 from the field, but he comes in and gives 10 points off the bench for Phoenix. For whatever reason, as bad as Phoenix has been forever now, it feels like, they've kicked the Mavs' ass the last two years. And it continued to play out, man. You got two games, now one game left against Phoenix in this final eight. And, you know, I myself was guilty of kind of looking past that and just saying, okay, surely, surely they're going to sort this out, right? They're going to take care of business and they're going to make sure that they get those wins because you got to play the Bucks. You got to play the Clippers. You already had to play the Rockets. So if you got two Phoenix games in there, you can't you can't screw around with that. You have to take care of business in those games. At the very least, you got to do it once. Like you got another shot at that, but I mean, let's be real. Even if you are essentially locked into the 7th seed at this point, you can't mess around in this scenario. You need to close. You need to find some rhythm because at this point your guys are shaken. They are shaken. Luca and KP have put up big numbers in each of the first two games, but it hasn't amounted to wins. Luca's getting to the cup at will in these last two games. A big moment in this game. Now I know Mikael Bridges had like five blocks or something crazy here for that. Let me look up exactly how many he had for them. Bridges had I had three blocks. It felt like more. I guess I'm thinking deflections. In 39 minutes, only four points, one board, one uh, assist, but three blocks and two steals. So he was active hands, great defense. He was right there. Luka got all the way to the cup, and there seemed to be a momentary hesitation, and he kicked out to KP for the three. KP short arms that. Ball's tipped out of bounds between Dorian and a Suns player. Initially called Suns ball, overturned on review. Sets up the inbound to Tim Hardaway Jr. on the ill-fated Three gets a great look and just misses it. Um, but the Mavericks as a team have got to find some rhythm at this point because they look 
shaken for a team that supposedly focused for a solid month on purely defense their defense has been terrible terrible and Luca and KP are doing work but when no one else is performing it doesn't really convert it doesn't mean what you need it to mean so yeah man this might just be the uh take your lumps young fella and move on scenario here but this this was hard to watch i'm not gonna lie to you like even with mavs basketball having been gone for what four months these first two games back have really beaten a lot of the will out of you and it was tough watching the late third quarter when phoenix just suddenly went nuts and probably half of the fourth quarter of this game it just felt like your soul being ripped from your body watching this team i mean in the in the closing moments of the clutch uh there were there were just some mind-boggling errors by the mavericks like missing easy rebounds uh fouling a three-point shooter dorian finney smith forearm checking an alley-oop attempt to deandre ayton that you know results in two free throws and the ball and it's just mental lapses this is where you need steady veteran leadership and, you know, Luka has taken that elevated step to, I think, superstardom from very good player to superstardom. But I, I think he has the tools in him to be that guy. But there is a certain presence this team simply misses right now. And J.J. Barea, had he been on the floor in this game, I think he probably fills that role and we haven't seen Berea yet. Meanwhile, Houston gets a, a, another fantastic win over the Bucks. I don't think the Bucks, now that they've kind of made their statement, I don't know that they necessarily have a whole lot to play for, they feel like. So, you know, make of that what you will. But regardless, Houston continues to take care of business. And uh, with this new format between the rest, and I really feel like the officiating has been more, not more dialed in in the sense that they're, getting more calls right i think they're more dialed in in the sense that they are over officiating a lot of these games there were there was some real suspect officiating in this game but i don't really like to delve too deep into officiating because it feels like the the loser tactic right like it feels like you you lost so that's why you're complaining about officiating had the mavericks hit had kp or hardaway hit a three and the mavericks win by one I'm probably not spending much time talking about officiating. So I don't like to dwell on it in those cases. But I think the format, especially without the crowd or whatever, the digital fans, not near the crowd noise that you have normally, I think you hear everything and it's more suited towards their style of play where you have Harden and Westbrook, you know, just drawing all these fouls. But... Regardless, some here's some footnotes here from Twitter I saw from uh, Bobby Carella. Luka Doncic has scored 20 plus in 21 straight games, now a career best streak. The only longer streaks in franchise history are Dirk at 31 and separately 29, and Mark Aguirre at 34. Obviously, Maguire or Aguirre has the franchise record. Uh, all things may have called out the 26-9 run there. I screen capped that as that was happening. Uh, also from Bobby says, both Booker and Aiton picked up their fifth yeah, foul early in the there. third quarter. Very unfortunate breaks for the Mavericks. Um, or those were very fortunate breaks for the Mavericks who needed to take advantage. But then you had that run and the Suns flipped it to take the advantage. And it just kind of took all of the air out of the balloon, it felt like, for Dallas. So, yeah, I don't know what to say at this point for the Mavericks. They're 0-2 in the bubble. Uh, one of those, obviously, being the devastating o OT loss to the Rockets. And now they got to get back at it Tuesday. They're going to face the Kings. And, you know, at this point, you kind of wonder, because they already ate a bad loss early this year to the Kings. And I, I want to say that they can correct the ship. I kind of thought they would correct the ship here. I thought that they would take this a little more seriously. But 
after the after the first half, they kind of took their foot off the gas. The third quarter imploded, and then the fourth quarter was trying to reestablish control, but guys weren't hitting shots. You got two guys balling out, and everyone else kind of a little bit, but not much else. So while you had an offensive explosion from several players in the first game against Houston, everybody came crashing back to earth in terms of the role players in this game. So we'll see, man. This is going to be a tough one to swallow, but we've got to try and move on. Got to try and just find rhythm because at this point, my mind's not even thinking about any possibility or any possible scenarios of moving up. I'm just saying, hey, let's just try and find some rhythm and as much as we can sort things out. If we end up playing the damn Clippers, all right, fine. That's the path we were headed down prior to the season suspending anyway. Granted, there were 17 games left where you could have possibly separated that out and gone a little bit different, but I digress. I'm just rattling on at this point. Uh, not much else to say, man. This is a tough one, but we'll move on from it. If you liked the video, don't forget to drop a like below. Subscribe to the Dallas Prospect. Leave, I already said leave a comment below, didn't I? Yeah. It's one of those nights. Till next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect.